Hi, I'm Luke Sherveld. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Back in June, I went to Cinegear and did some interviews. And now it's like four months later and I'm finally getting around to cutting them. But before we jump into that, uh, I just want to put in a little plug for filmmakers. Drinking bourbon. A um, month or two ago, they were doing a summer series on Grip and Electric, and uh, they interviewed um, a guy from Matthews, uh, Dave Donaldson from Grip Tips, and myself, uh, and it was a really good experience. I, I'm, uh, I'm, let's see, so it's like uh, filmmakers drinking bourbon podcast.com. Uh, I'll put a link down below too. Uh, I was um, uh, episode number 99. So they've got a lot of episodes <laughs> to check out. And it was a good experience because I'm usually doing the interviews. And in this case, uh, you know, you get some of the questions ahead of time, but being on for an hour, it's, it's a little uh, nerve wracking. Uh, even though I had notes in front of me, I didn't really have time to, to look at them because I had to talk, you know, and so, uh, and think about what they're asking. And, you know, it's, it's all very uh, dynamic. Uh, great experience. You know, you feel like you're a politician and under, under, under fire kind of thing. But uh, a lot of fun, good guys. Uh, they're out of Ohio and well, Midwest. And uh, yeah, so anyway. There's the plug. All right, let's get to uh, the first interview, and that was with uh, Mole Richardson. So it was with uh, Brian Eustace. He's the VP of Engineering. And here's his introduction to uh, Mole. It's kind of reimagining itself as an LED company. Uh, actually, they're just adding to their vast amount of tungsten and HMI stuff. But, uh, you know, you go to Cinegear, on the floor there, it's all LED. So, uh, take it away, Brian. Good morning. I'm Brian Eustace from Mole Richardson. Uh, welcome to Cinegear 2017. And I want to introduce you to some of our uh, new products we're introducing at the show today. And I just happen to have right here next to me is our new uh, Fresnel. Uh, this is an 8-inch Junior. Uh, what's new about this is it's uh, color changing, uh, touchscreen technology. You can adjust your color uh, from 2700 to 6500. It's got plus minus green on it, so you can uh, shift it as much as you want. It's got presets on it. If you want to preset your own color, for uh, it's got uh, Lumen Radio built in, it's Bluetooth. Uh, RDM, uh, uh, TrueCon 1, which means you can disconnect under power, it's got battery connection, um, it's got a lot of unique things uh, which I don't think any Fresnels have today. So very uh, flexible uh, fixture and uh, we're very excited about it. We have uh, four models, uh, we got the baby, 200 watt. This Junior 300 watt, Studio Junior, yeah, that's true. 10 inch, uh, 400 watt, and we're introducing at this show as well is a 5K equivalent, which is an 800 watt uh, uh, fixture. So, and they all have all this new technology. Now, before Brian gets to telling us about uh, the Mole Richardson uh, app, the uh, breakdown of uh, DMX channels, let's uh, just recap what he was telling us. So. Uh, if you're used to, say, an airy kit or a mole kit uh, for running gun stuff, you know, you've got the, uh, like a 150 watt or 200 watt. In mole language, that would be an inky. Uh, this is the, the airy version. And 300 watt, uh, that was, a, you know, a in betweeny or a tweeny. Uh, uh, the tweeny was the 650. So I guess this is uh, in betweeny. I never got into those. I was I was into uh, airy by then. Uh, so then 650. So you got the tweeny. 
love these names. And then uh, what Brian is showing us, it starts with the 1K equivalent. So that's the baby. And in LED land, that's 200 watt. So there you say, see already that for 200 watts, you're getting 1K worth of output. So, you know, much more efficient. Then he's got the 2K, just the regular 2K, and that's the junior, and that's 300 watts. So there, you know, for 300 watts, you're getting a whole lot more light. Then he's got the, and that's the 8-inch Fresnel, so it's just 8-inch. Then he's got the 10-inch Fresnel, and that's like the Studio 2K, is how they, they call it. And that's still a junior, because it's... But this one is 400 watts. So you're gaining. And now uh, they also have 5K, and that's the senior, and that is 800 watts. Okay, and then later on we'll see the 10K, and that's the tenor, and that's 1600 watts. But this one, Unlike these, these are Kelvin tunable. So you get your warm to cool. You've got, uh, you know, the, the um, touchscreen interface, the Wi-Fi, everything awesome. I'm not quite sure how much is uh, built into the, the 10K but the tenor, but it is uh, still either warm or cool. You get a 3200 or you get a 5600, I believe. That hasn't uh, joined the ranks of, of these, uh, you know, very um, uh, changeable lights, which is awesome. And I guess they're figuring people just aren't buying those kinds of units. You're probably into Astra's or, or a smaller panel lights at that point. So this just gives you that breakdown. Now, these are just Fresnels and Mole has been, uh, makes all kinds of things. They, they make Fresnels, they make uh, soft lights, uh, space lights. Um, so we're just talking Fresnels today. Okay, so uh, back to Brian. The app will be pretty basic to start with because it'll be our first app. And the app, the screen on your iPhone or your Android We'll basically have three sliders. We'll have for color, intensity, plus minus screen. Pretty simple, and it's it's an app we have developed ourselves. Okay, so channel wise in DMX, you've got how many channels? Well, we got four channels. We got uh, one for changing color, 27 to 65. So we got zero on the board. That would be 27. Go to 10. That's 65, and anywhere in between. Channel two will be intensity. Channel three will be uh, plus screen, zero to plus. Channel 4, 0 to plus magenta, or negative green as I call. Cool. Uh, and the, the amount of uh, green magenta adjustment is just enough uh, to bring you a little bit above the black body curve or bring it below. Not a big range, not a narrow band, just to, you know, to balance it. Okay, so that's all pretty cool. A lot of flexibility, a lot of capability there. Uh, but I wanted to ask him the question that's been kind of working itself out in me for a while now. And that is, uh, where'd the Fresnels go? Uh, you know, when I started out, you started out with a, a mole kit or an airy kit and you had some Fresnels and you had some open faces and uh, you combined them to, you know, make soft and then uh, have lights that you could cut well and that would create patterns. And, and then as you got onto bigger uh, shoots, bigger sets, you'd eventually have 12Ks, 18Ks, uh, you know, large Fresnels that you'd put on condors and they'd come through windows and they'd create, you know, beautiful patterns and, and uh, or you just used them through diffusion and, and that was the light that you had. Uh, you had a lot of big Fresnels. And then they just kind of slowly got used less and less as uh, the output of PARs. Uh, so, um, you know, HMI PARs, for the most part, were taken over. And uh, 
because you just needed that big smash of light, you wanted the most amount of output, and then you softened it from there, rather than starting it with uh, a nice Fresnel lens and, and uh, you know, the, how it gives you the, the nice um, beams of light that you can cut well. Um, people were less worried about that. And um, uh, then sort of along that track, you had... Uh, PARs that had lenses in them, obviously, and the Fresnel lens just never quite did the same thing as a real Fresnel. Uh, and Joker, you know, K5600, did a really good job of creating a fixture that could be used as a PAR, but also could be made into an ellipsoidal. So the Jolico. And there, that was a nice combo because you had a lot of these pars and lights that gave you a lot of output that you would soften so you'd make you know soft boxes and and put them through chimeras and stuff like that uh and then you had a hard smash of light that you would have used a fresnel for now you're using the jolico and you could put in the patterns and and so there's kind of this evolving of use of lights in at least the work i was doing that used the Fresnel lens less and less. And, uh, you know, people were trying to unload their big Fresnels um, as they were just not being called for as much. Now here, Mole is making Fresnels, and it seems like there's been something missing. Like, we've been missing the Fresnels. And there are a couple uh, smaller companies that do make Fresnels, uh, light panel, you know, with the solar, uh, and uh, the company that makes the sort of um, accordion type um, Fresnel. So there are some companies that that make them. Um, but wait, I totally forgot to mention Aries L series Fresnels. I love sky panels, but for some reason I never warmed up to the L series, even though they have a similar interface. They just seem kind of clunky heavy they had fans it was probably just timing the fact that mole sort of got into it in a big way uh, i wanted to as they moved to leds I, I wanted to ask brian about that so talk to me a little bit about you know if, if a lot of people are used to the sort of uh you know they started with an astra then uh maybe they go to uh you know uh, a kino mm -hmm. um and you know we're, people just aren't as into fresnels as they used to be maybe uh, speak to that, if you will. Like. Uh, well, uh, you know, obviously there's a big shift towards panels and soft light and big light sources, feeling that, you know, everyone wants, now that all the cameras are lower light, uh, they don't seem to need as much. So, the, but I, one thing I think they're still uh, missing is uh, being able to control the light a little more. Uh, depending on what you're doing, if you want to punch it through a window and create, sun, you know, sunlight outside or or uh, midday, you know, 65. There's, I guess, the, there's a tendency to think one size fits all. And as we know from history, that's not the case. It's just the fad. Uh, we, Mole Richardson has never really been a company that's been big on panels because it's not been our strength. Uh, we've focused more on our core competency, to use that buzzword. Excuse, <laughs> forgive me for that. It's probably a bit overused these days. But anyways, in our case, we tried to stick to what we know and to take the, the new technology and apply it to products we've been making for 100 years. And we feel we're better at that. And so if you go out looking, shopping for a Fresnel today, there's a lot of guys out there. Uh, but we don't feel there's a lot of guys that make a commercial quality Fresnel that you can throw in the back of your truck or a rental company can use because we build the, the lights, not to boast or brag, we build them the same way as the other lights. So that's the, we feel is the value we bring and also the, the, the technology and also the support as well. Uh, there's, there's 50 companies that are here today, I don't know if they'll be here 10 years from now. And uh, you can buy a, a spare part for a light that was built in 1950 at Mole. I think that was actually a pretty good answer. I feel like when I see that lineup of the Mole Richardson uh, Fresnels, 
I miss Fresnels. It's like my common practice has been, you know, soft light, uh, and especially with the, the flood of, of LEDs, you know, they're often so harsh, you have to soften them. And now they're coming out with translucent fronts. And so, you know, you soft light on the person's face and then maybe a harder light uh, coming from, from behind or, you know, edging, scratching, and then kind of a harder smash of light uh, in, in the background. Uh, that used to be Fresnels or then Ellipsoidals or Jolicos. And it still is Jolicos. Uh, it's something that you can cut something that you can pattern uh, but I kind of want that LED equivalent of that and I haven't really found that and so these Fresnels are intriguing and then I heard that uh, one of the Mole Richardson Fresnels was on loan to uh, a shoot uh, a movie being shot in Oakland so I thought I'd stop by well, uh, we're uh, filming the independent feature, Ten Cent Daisy, which is a, uh, I call it a folklore film noir um, about mermaids who come to Northern California and uh, migrate from the Caribbean, and it's a story of murder, distrust, and ultimately familial bonds. Um, the light in the background here that you're interested in is a, a mole LED Fresnel. Uh, Mo Richardson uh, let us field test these lights, uh, this along with the 10K, uh, on this film. Uh, we're very grateful for that, and uh, I'm finding it to be really helpful. Uh, we like the beam spread, we like the low um, power consumption of the LEDs, and it being a Fresnel uh, gives a nice clean shadows. So uh, all in all, it feels like a really nice light to have uh, that uh, supplements our usual complement of lights. So, what does this uh, replace for you in this uh, setup, do you think? Well, uh, this is similar to a 1200 Fresnel HMI, uh, but with much less uh, power draw. So, uh, you know, in locations like this where uh, we're trying to use, uh, you know, existing power supplies. Uh, that's really helpful. Um, and the versatility of the LED with uh, dimming capability uh, is really helpful. Uh, it makes for uh, these kind of films all about being efficient in uh, space, efficient in time, and efficient in power. And uh, the LEDs uh, are uh, uh, not as hot, so it's easier on the actors to find space. So, uh, in this scene, uh, as I mentioned, we're shooting something of film noir, and uh, we do have Venetian blinds in this hotel room, and uh, we're going to put some shadows on the wall. This is the first time using these mole Fresnels. Uh, they're LED, they're daylight balanced, and uh, you have the option to flood and or spot the light, and we've been mainly using them to uh, supplement uh, daylight. Uh, what we're using right now is the 5K version, but we also have the 10K. Uh, what's great about this light is that it runs off house power. This light specifically um, pulls about 4 to 8 amps, and so that's really easy on your power cycle. cycle. And um, right now you can see we have created some sort of a Venetian blind effect. Um, and uh, with the Fresnel you can get quite distinctive shadows and um, the edges are a little bit fuzzy but they always that depends on the distance too and obviously on the way the light is spotted or flooded. Um, yeah I find them really handy because they're light you can dim them to the intensity you wish to use them at and uh, yeah I'm really excited about them actually both of the lights were super useful and uh, they're not hot, obviously, they're, uh, um, they're cool lights. Um, and they just feel like a, a, uh, an HMI for now in that way. Uh, so I'm really excited to use them on this shoot. Okay, look at this. Let's go over here to our 10K. This is, this is a, a 10,000 watt equivalent LED. This particular one is in, is, in, is in daylight. This is the largest LED fr uh, Fresnel. 
made today by anyone. And this actually consumes uh, 1,600 watts of, of, of power, uh, equivalent of 10,000 watts tungsten. Uh, what's the benefits of this versus a standard one? Uh, you can dim to 5%, 0%. So if you had a HMI, this one's in daylight, you can only dim typically to 40% or so. With this one you can dim to, to zero. Uh, you don't have any UV issues to deal with. Don't have any heat issues to deal with. You can see my hand is on it here. It's operating at, at uh, uh, full, uh, full output. Not be doing that with a, no, with a no, 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 not, not at all. So a lot of the safety issues are, are gone away. A lot of the uh, consumable issues of, of globes. Um, so a 10K, 10,000 watt, as an LED, what does it draw? Uh, this draws under 15 amps. You can plug this into a household circuit. So that's, I mean, that's great for like the independent guy that's making, you know, is on a budget, he doesn't have a big generator or whatever. You can, you can get a couple of these and, and you know, use them quite effectively. Um, and then, uh, is there a way to show what it's, what it's doing, I guess? Yeah, okay, so if we look up here, I'm gonna give you, I think we're in, there we are there. So that's, that, and I can see I'm gonna widen the beam there. Really nice wide beam. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it does everything. And it, you can see it's construction, skid plates, castings, all is, you know, it's, it's built for rough handling. And it, these are, a lot of the rental companies have these and they're, they're renting them and they're actually getting, a lot of success with them. I, anyone I talk to that's using this particular fixture, they really like it, you know? So, um, cool. And, uh, and then here's the line. Yes. So, these are the different juniors? Yeah, so it's a junior 8 inch, studio junior 10 inch, 400 watts, baby, 6 inch, and down the end there we got the uh, senior, which is also a 10 inch, but that's 800 watts, half, half the power of the. Uh, the ten tenor. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's a little reintroduction to Mole Richardson and Fresnels. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.